Okay, so you're going to start by cutting two six and a half inch circles, and this is going to make a fairly large pin cushion. I have this template that I just um, lay on top and trace, and then cut out my two circles. Um, you can use the same fabric or different fabric. And then you're going to put the two pieces together so the right sides are facing each other and line them up and go ahead and pin it. And then you're going to stitch a half inch around the outside, leaving about an inch and a quarter opening, inch and a half opening. And you want to make sure you back stitch very well so that when we go to stuff it, that it will not open up on you. And you're also going to go around the outside about every inch and a quarter, inch and a half, and make a slit not quite all the way up to your sewing line. And this will help things lay smoothly when we turn it inside out. So you can see the little slits here. And then you're going to just start pulling the inside through the little hole. It takes just a couple of minutes. And then lay it flat. And once you do that, you want to mark both sides with a permanent marker and you want to find the very center. I forgot to do this. I always forget to do this and it's so much easier later on if you have the center marked. So go ahead and do that. And then this is, I just used 100% poly fiber fill to fill it and I am going to switch over to video in just a second here. Um, you put a ton of fiber fill in it. I'll go over that. And I also put a little bit of scented lavender that I just get in satchels at Marshall's. To put that in about halfway through this when I'm stuffing, I forgot to do that, of course, so I go back in the end and put it in, and that worked out just fine. So let me switch over to video to show you guys how to stuff it here. Hey, you guys. I'm going to show you this part on video. And excuse me, I have a little bit of a cold. Um, <clears throat> I just showed a picture of all of this um, polyester fiber fill and you'd be surprised how much you need to stuff this so what we're going to do is we're going to start stuffing it through this little hole this is probably the most time intensive part of this um, and it so it just takes time to get all the stuffing in this little hole and um, like I have some arthritis in my hand so sometimes I have to do like half of it and then take a break. But you're just gonna take it and start stuffing it in this little hole. And you're gonna stuff it and stuff it and stuff it. And when you're done stuffing, you're gonna stuff it some more. <laughs> and when you think you're done stuffing, you're gonna stuff it some more. Um, it's kind of amazing how much you can get in here. But what you want in the end is the cushion to be really really filled so that it's tight when you do when you put the strings on um, otherwise if you don't fill it enough you'll have all kinds of um, little puckers and gaps around the seam on the side so and you can just don't worry about um, what's happening with the opening because we're going to, we'll fix all that later. You do want to make sure that when you sew your circle, that when you do, let me get this in here, that when you, when you, when you start and stop, that you back stitch very well so that this isn't opening up on you as you're stuffing it. So I'm going to keep stuffing and I will come back in just a minute. Okay, I just want to show you guys, once you get it going, like I have this huge chunk here, I'm not even breaking off pieces. I'm just shoving the whole thing in there with my forefinger. Um, all, you know, all together. I, um, I like to try and keep the fiber fill as together as possible because then you um, your pin cushion doesn't end up lumpy. Although as long as you put enough fiber fill in there, 
it really doesn't matter. So you can see it's filling up, but I still have all of this yet to do. So be right back. So we'll see if we can get it in there. We should be able to. So that's what I mean, like keep stuffing it. You think it's full, keep stuffing it. You think it's full, keep stuffing it times 10 <laughs> until you can absolutely get no more in there. Oh my goodness. So yeah, for you, for anyone out there who has arthritis, just <laughs> give yourself time because I think I might be getting pretty close here. And you're, you're going to have a little bit of puckering. And I probably should have used something other than purple thread. <laughs> That's okay. Tiny bit more in there. Okay, so I have this itty bitty bit left of that huge ball. So now what we're going to do, and this part's a little bit tricky. Um, but just trust yourself that you can do it if you're new to sewing. We're going to close up this little hole with some pins and then just stitch it closed. Okay, you guys, <clears throat> I can totally tell that I have a head cold and my head is not functioning because I keep forgetting to do things. So I forgot to put in my scented lavender. Whew, this is very strongly scented. Um, it's really nice scent though. So I'm going to open it back up and just what I would normally do is put the um, scent in the middle. Let me just show you what this looks like. <clears throat> So it's just like these um, little chips. Probably not the best idea to have put this on something sticky. So yes, this would be much easier to do had I not already stuffed it. I'm going to try and wiggle it into the middle. What I should have done is made my self instructions and followed them. I, I am absolutely awful at following instructions. I want to do everything. <laughs> without reading instructions. And this stuff is very heavily scented, so you don't need a whole lot. Let's see if I can get the rest of this in there. I am sorry if I'm not full of pep today. <laughs> I have, I've had a head cold for, oh, it started three or four days ago. And, um, yeah, I don't get them that much, but it's just, I don't have like the aches and stuff. It really is just a head cold. But okay, I'm back. Um, I ran out of video space, so I made some more space in my camera, got a cup of tea, went and found some of my sewing supplies. So we'll have a little sewing circle time now here while I stitch this up. 
Um, I'm going to use regular thread that's just doubled. Um, I also have here to, you can use button thread, but the only problem with that is um, because it's so thick and this is so tight, um, sometimes you could end up with some little holes. So I just use regular, um, this is Gutterman thread. Um, a lot of you guys know I've done a lot of sewing in the past. I My grandmother taught me how to sew when I was very young. I spent a lot of time living with her in the summers. And um, I also took a year of sewing as an elective in college. So um, a couple things I wanted to say. I should maybe do a, like a sewing 101 video. But if you guys are ever at Joann's and you want a really nice pair of either like these are embroidery scissors or I have them in all different sizes up to full size scissors for cutting material. Um, the Ginger brand of scissors is incredible. Um, I purchased when I was in college many years ago um, the five inch scissors as well as the full size like 10 inch sewing scissors. I still have them today and they are like brand new if you take care of them. Um, I remember my sewing teacher telling us do not cut your hair with these. <laughs> um, but these I've had for oh, probably 10 years and they are awesome. I have, I have two other I think these are, I don't know if these are, what size these are, like an inch and a half. I have like a couple of two inch pairs as well. Um, and if they ever, if you get a pair and they ever start like sticking, all you have to do is rub your hands on them and the oil from your hands will oil the scissors. I've never done anything else to take care of these and you can see how fine the tip is on them like if you need to get uh, you can use them for a million things but as far as like taking seams apart or taking tags out of clothing or anything like that um, they're awesome because they have such a fine tip these are my go-to scissors for like everything um, but as far as having a pair in your craft room to like cut ribbon and stuff like that like the Tim Holtz scissors do that very well too I know a lot of paper scissors won't cut ribbon well but this will cut things down to the most minute little trimming. So those are awesome. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and sew this. And I have some little threads sticking out here that I will cut off later. I'm gonna sew from the inside out and try and come out the very top of the seam. I mean, there's a lot of different ways you could do this. Oh my goodness gracious. I need to get some, I've never used it, but beeswax, I believe, if you put that on your thread, will help it from tangling so much. Okay. My goodness. So you see I just came out, I'm starting on, the, I'm going back on the inside and just coming out kind of the top of that seam and you're just going to make little stitches all the way across and then I'm going to make some coming back as well. So you can't pull it too tight right now otherwise your thread will just come through. I only make these pin cushions once in a while because they're so difficult on my hands. And we have cotton thread, or is this cotton or polyester thread? That's polyester thread, but on the cotton fabric, um, gets caught a little bit. So as I'm sewing here, I went upstairs. I'll share with you guys what we have going on. So we only have, I keep saying this, like we have two weeks left of our remodel. 
Um, we're trying to get the contractor to come back. We ran out of tile for the backsplash in the kitchen. It's finally here, but now we're trying to get the contractor to come back to finish that. Um, my husband is finishing working on the girls' bathroom, which we had issues with the ceiling, so we had to kind of gut their bathroom a little bit. Not completely. We had to pull part of the ceiling off, redo that. We're repainting it and putting a new vanity in there, so... We have that to finish, and then um, he's been painting quite a bit. We have He probably has about two-thirds of the house painted downstairs, and all the hard stuff is done. So, oh, lovely. Um, but my sewing machine, once we get this all done, I'll show you guys on video, but my sewing machine used to be in the room right next to me here with which was our dining room which is now a sitting room and I don't really have room for it in there anymore you know to have the room look like I would like to so I move I'm moving my sewing supplies up to our spare bedroom which we are gonna um, also redo here when we get done with everything else just give it a fresh coat of paint and um, right now it's one of those rooms that has like all types of miscellaneous stuff from the whole house has been shoved in there as we've been am I in frame yes as we've been remodeling so can you tell I have a hard time talking and doing things at the same time um, Hopefully you won't have as much trouble with your thread tangling as I am. Um, but my sewing supplies are up there right now and they're like in a big mess. So I had to go searching for my thread box. So I just brought some thread down for me to have down here. So I figure once I we get that room done and I get my sewing machine set up in there, I like to have my sewing machine set up all the time so that I can do mending or whatever the girls may need <clears throat> or you know crafting sewing but I'll just have to hike up the stairs to do any sewing which is okay I've um, the new sitting room has been together for a couple weeks and we are we've already used that room in the past two weeks more than we have in the 16 years that we've been in our house because we never used our dining room. We have a large table in our kitchen and um, my daughter came up with the idea of turning it into a sitting room and that was just an excellent idea. I think we're really gonna spend a lot of time enjoying that. Okay, so you guys can kind of see what I'm doing. I'm gonna do this all the way down and then kind of come back and tie it off and then I'll be back to show you the next step. Okay, so I stitched it really tight all the way down and then when I come back I don't do it quite as tight um, and I'm gonna knot this off and then what you want to do is take your tails I'll show you in a minute and we're gonna just thread them back into the pin cushion so they're stuck inside So this, I probably have to do them separately. This needle has a pretty small eye on it. I don't know if I can get them both in there. I've got two of them in there. So I'm going to take it and just stick it in the hole there. Pull that through good. Cut that off and do the same to this side. Okay, I need to start talking faster. <laughs> um, <clears throat> for doing 
the um, seams that go around, you want a long, strong, but fairly thin needle because you're going to need it to pass through the buttonholes several times even with string in there. Um, you want two buttons and those are going to help us um, so that our um, material doesn't rip. So what I'm going to do is start off by counting off 10 lengths of string. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Just to make sure we have enough thread. And then I'm going to thread my needle and tie a button on the end. And there we go. And this is a little bit cumbersome to work with, but you have to make sure that you have enough thread to go around. I've done this where I don't have enough, and then you have to tie it off and start over. Okay. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is... Thread this button through two of the holes with each of the ends of the thread. And this is button thread. You want to make sure you use heavy thread. Don't know if I already said that. And I'm just going to tie a knot here and leave some long tails to use to tie it. Okay, so we have the button down on the knotted end my needle on this end. I have marked the center of my cushion and this is where if you mark the center of your cushion earlier on with a permanent marker, just put a dot in the exact center, it saves you a big hassle now in trying to find the center, which I always forget to do. <laughs> And so what we're going to do is thread a button through this side. And we're going to cover up these buttons with other embellishments. But the buttons help. If you keep coming through there, you're eventually going to end up with a hole in the fabric. And so you're going to just do quarter pie pieces all the way around. And this one is one of the trickiest because you have to get through one of those holes. And you're going to pull that tight. Just like that. It's okay if there's a little puckering in there. You want that to be as tight as possible. And then you're going to go around the other side. Actually, I'm not going to pull it so, so tight yet because I want to probably not even in frame here. There we go. My thread is caught underneath there. Okay. So I am going to pull both of those. And it gets difficult to keep these really taut. So what I'm going to do is come back through and tie a knot here so that I don't have to keep holding this tension. And if you have an extra pair of hands around at this point, that can be very helpful. So I'm just going to tie a quick knot here. Oh lordy. 
So you absolutely need to have some patience when doing this. Oh, I think it's pretty tight there. Okay, now I don't have to worry about holding that. So I'm going to go around and do the same thing to um, make the eight different quadrants. And as you're doing these, you want to try and even out your all your different little pie pieces before you move on to the next section. They don't have to be absolutely perfect, but it gets more difficult the further you go along. I think that's good. Okay. So, I have all of my quadrants done and knotted and fairly even. You can move them over a little bit if you want to. Now at this point I do everything I can to sew my embellishments on because if you want this to last a long time hot glue will only last so long. Okay, so I am going to Just sew my embellishments on. Like so. And you're using, you know, the thicker thread that's already doubled. So, you know, one pull through there is fine. And do the same on the other side and tie it off. And these buttons, um, I believe I mentioned, just make sure you use, this part can be a little bit trickier. But I actually have a button here that has holes in it, so I'm going to pull it through. Before I tighten it all up, get it back underneath there so I can pull it through on this side. Tight, and then the other side, tight, just like that. I'm going to tie it off here real quick, and ta-da! <laughs> With a little patience, <laughs> that's how you make a pin cushion. Now this one seems to have come out a little bit bigger than my previous ones and this was starting with um, a six and a half inch circle and you can kind of just play with it till you get it to look the way you want um, but it is handmade so you know it doesn't need to be crazy perfect. Um, and it, like I said, you could put, these are my favorite centers, but you could put, you know, a little bunch of seam binding in the middle. Um, you could tie some charms to it. As I just want to show you real quick what I ended up doing. I went back and put some elastic lace trim around the seam because I just wasn't crazy about the way that the seam looked. I hadn't used this, the right color thread in that. So I really like this. Um, this is something you could do before you know, when you get your cushion all stuffed um, before you put the quarters in to go ahead and tack this on there. I think elastic would work the best because it's going to stretch as you're um, putting the quarters in. However, regular, I haven't done it with regular trim, but I'm sure that would work too. You would just have to make sure that you tack it down pretty well, but I would, I would suggest using something elasticy if you have it. So I just went through and tucked it underneath and then I did um, put a little, I went up and down and just tacked it on there. You can't see it at all because I used tiny little stitches. Um, but I do really like the way that that came out. So just wanted to show you that. And then whenever I give these away too, this is for actually my Tilda giveaway. Um, I usually put some stick pins, you know, make a couple coordinating stick pins and put them in there and then give them away as gifts. Or sometimes too, I'll just go buy a pack of really pretty um, pearl nice 
stick pins and then put a whole bunch of them in there and they make really nice gifts so thanks a lot you guys um anybody has any questions feel free to message me and have a great day i hope this was helpful for you bye bye